Today I messed up by sending my daughter to school with a 3 million Scoville sandwich. Alright Reddit, I'm an idiot. I'll start off by saying that my wife has very weak taste buds. She can hardly taste anything unless they're on the extremes of flavor. Stupid salty, stupid spicy, etc. Well, it's my job to get the kids ready for school, make lunches, get them dressed and out to the bus, and then off I go to work. On this particular day, my wife was working an early shift, so I decided to make her lunch too. I made ham sandwiches for all three lunches, two normal for my daughters, and then one with the last dab spread across thickly on both sides of the sandwich. I put them into baggies and packed it up. If you don't know what the last dab is, it's a hot sauce made popular by a YouTube channel that sits at 3 million Scoville. It's not for the week, it's powerful. It sets your whole body on fire and there isn't much you could do, but try milk and wait for the spice to pass. Today at around 11.30, I got a call from my oldest daughter's teacher saying she's in agony, vomiting on the floor, and is in the nurse's office being assessed. I immediately knew what I did, left work and rushed to school, stopping at a gas station to get milk and thick milk chocolate to try to help her. I've heard chocolate works, but I've never had the misfortune to try it. When I got there, the nurse had figured out what happened and I got an ear hole from her about the dangers of spicy food for young kids and that I could have done damage. I agreed and just let her go off on me while I was comforting my daughter because frankly I deserved it. I explained what happened to the principal who wanted to fill out an incident report and he was understanding that mistakes happen but also said this mistake could have been worse and again I agreed and I'm so embarrassed. When I told my wife what happened when she got home she went to comfort our daughter, jokingly called me a huge moron, and we had a bit of a laugh with my two daughters over it. She's since recovered and I learned a value lesson, don't make radioactive sandwiches around your kids. I love how he's saying he learned his lesson. Yeah, you weren't the one that just had to vomit in front of your entire class and then go to the nurse's office and get picked up because your dad low-key poisoned your sandwich, man. I feel like you gotta do some apologizing on that front. Dad, why did you do this to me? Well, she's just like vomiting three million Scoville sandwich up. That's insanely, like, way too spicy for any human to be consuming. If your wife can just eat that and have no problem, dude, she might be part lava monster. <laughs> What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. Today we're going to be taking a look at the subreddit today I up, but you know, we can't say that word, so it's messed up today. Let's go. Anyways, I'm thinking that you guys are going to enjoy this video. So, uh yeah, I figured I would make it. Be sure to press the like button otherwise you're going to end up having a mess up of this caliber and accidentally making your kid vomit in front of everybody. So, uh yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. Today I messed up by telling my wife a fake fact to mess with her. This happened almost 15 years ago and came back to bite me today and that's why I messed up. My wife loves Christmas songs and she loves to sing them. 15 years ago we were on a car ride and she decided to pass time by singing the Christmas song over and over and me being me I decided to mess with her just to be funny. When she got to the Jack Frost nipping at your nose I blanched and asked why she was singing that song in a mortified voice. She looked confused and I feigned surprise and said that it was surprising she's unaware of the faux pas and proceeded to inform her like many a German fairy tale Christmas songs also have a dark past in that Jack Frost was the name of a mental patient from the 20s who broke out of an asylum during Christmas break and went around devouring faces particularly noses to which he had acquired a taste for she bought it hook line and sinker she was shocked and horrified that people would sing about it and we talked about it for the duration of the ride Jack Frost antics growing darker and darker as the miles flew by. Fast forward to this morning, I'm in a good mood, it's super snowy, and I have the snowblower on the driveway. As I'm getting dressed, I start singing the Christmas song and she chastises me in a teasing voice. I just had no clue what she was talking about. She then confided in me that Jack Frost, the serial nosebiter, had ruined the song for her and she can no longer stand it. I laugh and explain that I was teasing that day and I honestly didn't think she believed me. And she got mad. Mad mad. Apparently this had been her go-to fact during the holidays and for the last 
15 years, she had shared this dark, gruesome tidbit with anyone who would listen. I guess a sea of confused and disbelieving looks and a flashback of people staring at her as if she were a nosebiter came back to haunt her, as the lies she had been spreading for years came back into the moment of dawning comprehension. She's mad and a little hurt, and I'm apparently the king of lies who is never to be trusted again. I mean, to be fair, you did make her run around for 15 years telling people that Jack Frost was a serial nosebiter who was eating faces in Germany in the 20s. I can understand why she might be a little bit upset. It's just insane that you forgot this happened, bro. Like, it, I mean, obviously you're just trying to mess around. You didn't think anyone would believe that Jack Frost was a serial nosebiter. But at the same time, how has this never come up since? Like, if she loves Christmas, you're telling me that at no point had she ever brought up the fact that you taught her about Jack Frost's nosebiting ability? I don't know, man. I feel like you uh, kind of deserve to be in a little bit of trouble for this one. Not like sleep on the couch trouble, but yeah, she might give you the cold shoulder for an hour. Today I messed up by not taking a teenager's business idea seriously enough. About a year ago, I was approached by a 16-year-old kid on LinkedIn with a business idea and he wanted me to work with him on an, I assumed, free until funding basis. I thought it was weird to be randomly contacted, but the foundations of idea were really solid and had growth potential. So I organized a call to discuss details and he ended up not being able to call. When he reached out to reschedule, the message just slipped through my inbox unread and after all, it was just a young guy with big dreams. How many guys are out there saying they've got the next big startup idea? Anyways, weeks go past and I forgot about rescheduling, and then months go past and I forgot about it altogether. A year goes by and I see his company in the news receiving over $2 million in venture capital funding. See, this one's just like one of those things of you never know when your opportunity's gonna be knocking, dude. They're always like, hey, you never know when you're gonna get your chance. Honestly, what are the odds of you having have had the potential to be like one of the first people on this that's now getting millions of dollars in venture capital funding? I'm just saying, you never know. That being said, Said, for the dude who's running this company, contacting strangers on LinkedIn and just being like, hey, want to talk about my idea? Probably was a pretty weird way to go about it, you know? They don't know you, they've never talked to you before, you're just like, you should work for me until we get funded, by the way. Today I messed up by telling my cousin she was dating her cousin, what in the sweet home Alabama. So I'm the family genealogist. I've done hundreds of hours of genealogy research and have composed a family tree of 8,000 individuals. Well, a couple months ago, I was at a wedding and chatting up one of my cousins I hadn't spoken to in a while. She introduced me to her date and uh, all was well until she mentioned her date's last name, which I recognized as being a last name in our family tree. I asked who his dad and grandfather were and I pulled up my research and sure enough, they were third cousins once removed. He and I had a laugh about it, but I could tell that she was less than thrilled. I later found out that she just couldn't take the information and was grossed out by it and she broke it off with him that night and it caused a bit of drama in the family. She ended up blocking me on Facebook and is mad at me for even telling her about it. I mean, obviously she's gonna be a little upset, dude. She was dating this dude and then you were like, by the way, it's your cousin. Because, you know, no one wants to date their cousin. I think it's probably more embarrassment than anything. I doubt she's like really mad because she probably is grateful that she found that out. But yeah, I'm sure she's not too thrilled about the fact that like at a wedding she found out that her date was literally related to her. I'd probably be a little embarrassed too. Wow, you guys are really keeping it in the family. That's not a compliment to most people, okay? Sweet home Alabama. This one's wild. Today I messed up by realizing I was ripped off six years ago. So back six years ago, my wife and I went on our first ever Boxing Day sale excursion. Excited and in search of a new TV. The TV was on sale at a major electronic retailer in the CBD. We got in early to the lineup so we wouldn't miss out on the new Samsung 65 inch on sale for the cheapest we had seen it. We got in the door as quickly as we could and waved down the closest attendant and snapped the last one up just in time. The attendant organized package pickup at the loading dock around back, but due to the sales and chaos on the shop floor, I couldn't have it until later that afternoon. No problem, we'll just get lunch and wait. Later that afternoon, we returned for our collection, dropped the seats down and loaded up, got home, unpacked to enjoy the new TV, and we did. Six years later, we thought for Christmas we would update our TV and went and got a 75-inch 4K for better picture quality and larger screen. We unboxed, set up the TV and couldn't believe just how much bigger it was. I moved the old Samsung 65 inch to the bedroom and set it up on a wall mount, and that's when I noticed XX55 in the serial number. Strange. 
Usually the number refers to the inches on the screen. Two minutes of Googling later and the serial number is definitely a 55 inch TV. But how can this be if we bought a 65 inch one on sale that year? We were replacing the 55 inch one that blew up. My wife files everything away in an orderly fashion so I went digging and sure enough we purchased a Samsung 65 inch TV and it's taken us six years to realize we got the wrong one. Six years have passed, I'm not gonna bother having an argument, I'll just leave it to our stupidity and be grateful that our new screen feels even bigger than anticipated. I just love the idea of them getting home with the 75 inch TV, getting it all set up and being like, oh my goodness, wow. Woo, wow, this, this picture quality is so much bigger. Who would have thought 10 inches mattered that much? Wow, we, my goodness. Meanwhile, the other TV is just sitting there. It's like, it has no idea that I've been the imposter all along, dude. Among Us joke in 2022, I'm pretty sure that uh, throws me in the cringe category, but whatever, I'm out here vibing. Today I messed up by confiscating my son's Game Boy and hiding it for 18 years. My son was not doing homework one day, so I confiscated the Game Boy Advance and told him he'd get it back next week. Well, he's a pretty clever dude and knew all my hiding places, so I had to hide it somewhere he'd never look. Except, a few years before, I had suffered a traumatic brain injury and I forget stuff, so when he did his homework and asked for it back after a week, I couldn't find it. And Trust me, I looked everywhere. Obviously not everywhere, because I didn't find it. We ended up moving, and I still didn't find it. 18 years later, I was donating some coats that I hadn't worn in a long time, and in the pocket of a Viennese trench coat from the 1930s, I found his Game Boy Advance, turned it on, and it worked. Pokemon appeared. I put fresh batteries into it and handed it to my 28-year-old son, who proceeded to laugh for a good five minutes, then played it for a few hours and proceeded to tell my wife and other adult children how silly I was. I'm not surprised he ended up playing it for a couple hours. Are you kidding me? He made his Pokemon game disappear for 18 years. In that amount of time, he could have easily had his entire party to level 100, beat the Elite for endless amounts of times, but no, it had to be sitting in some coat pocket instead. Those poor Pokemon really thought they were abandoned for 18 years. I don't know why this story makes me want to go bust out my like a fire red version of Pokemon and play it again Don't worry blast toys. I'm coming man. We will be reunited soon Today, I messed up by pretending to know the girl who thought she knew me. I was waiting for my order in a local coffee shop, and in the store waiting for the order was a girl who looked around my age and a guy who seemed a little bit older. I noticed the guy was talking the girl's ear off, and she didn't seem interested in the conversation. Next thing I noticed, she's approaching me saying, Brian? Now, my name's not Brian, but before I could correct her, I remember reading something online that said, like, if a girl ever pretends to know you, play along. She might be in trouble. So I played along and started having a friendly chat with her as if I knew her well. Not long into the conversation, she looks at me and goes, Wait, you're not Brian. To which I respond, I know, I thought we were doing a thing. And then a bit louder and annoyed, she said, Why would you pretend to be someone I know? Now the guy she was with before comes over and asks if everything's alright. Knowing I'd messed up, I told them honestly what I was doing, and turns out he was her boyfriend and he was talking about fantasy baseball, and that's why she's disinterested. She found it funny and thanked me, even though I read the situation wrong, and he was kind of offended but understood, and I've never felt more embarrassed. I mean, at least your heart was in the right place, but yeah, for future reference, you might want to like be like, hey, you know, my name isn't Brian, but can I help you with anything? I just love that he just rolled with it. He's like, yes, my name is Brian. She's like, you're an accountant, right? He's like, yes, I do the accounting. You know, just answers yes to every question. From now on, he just lives like the, the life of Walter Mitty, just continuously bouncing from weird situation to weird situation because he's lost the ability to turn anything down. Next thing you know, he ends up in like, I, I I don't know, Bulgaria in like a commercial for dental floss, all through the power of pretending to be Brian. Today I messed up by thinking it was normal to shower with socks on. Growing up, we never really went on vacation or stayed anywhere overnight other than our own home aside from an occasional camping trip. And I was always taught from a young age that when I took a shower I had to put on my shower socks, which were basically grippy socks that the hospital gives you. We had hooks on the wall to hang the socks on so they could dry off. Well, when I moved into my college dorm for the first time last month and went to take a shower, I asked my roommates where the sock hooks were. He looked at me confused, so I explained the hooks were for putting your shower socks on so they can dry off. He didn't believe me for some reason, so I showed him my shower socks and he nearly died laughing. Apparently for the past 20 years of my life, it was not normal to wear socks in the shower. I mean, listen, like, I, I don't know, it seems relatively harmless. Maybe your feet are very, very stinky because they've never been washed. Like, in the grand scheme of things, though, uh, I guess this is just kind of weird. What I really want to know is how this started. Like, why does everyone in your family wear socks in the shower? Because, yeah, I'm going to say that that's not normal. 
Like, what time did his dad just decide that everyone in the shower from now on was going to wear socks? Has this been happening for, like, only this generation? Did his parents grow up wearing socks in the shower? Did his grandparents start this? Is it a Great Depression thing? I don't know why I'm so curious. I've just literally never heard of people having shower socks before, so I, I just really want to know where this came from. And, uh, as for the roommate laughing at you, I mean, I don't know what you expected, dude. It's not normal for people to be wearing shower socks, so his reaction is basically all you could have expected. Anyways, guys, I think that's gonna do it. I know this one's a little bit shorter. I just thought a couple of these were funny, so I would share them with you. If you guys appreciated it, be sure to leave a comment down below. It helps the video do better, and pressing the like button also helps. And if you really enjoyed, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'd really appreciate it. If you like the intro song, it's by my friend Poncho. I'll put a link in the description. Be sure to go check it out. It would uh, mean a lot. And beyond that, I'll put a link to my podcast, The Scuffed Gast, in the description. Or you could use code SCRUBBY at the G Fuel checkout to get a discount on G Fuel. Other than that, guys, the last link down in the description is going to be a link to the merch store. Be sure to go get yourself the coolest merch to ever exist. It'll definitely, definitely make you uh, have the ability to breathe air. Yeah, that's right. Oxygen breathing ability is increased. Anyways, guys, on that note, that'll do it. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully, I'll see each and every single one of you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace. Uh, I just finished off the handle. I'd be right like light bulbs, you'd be like some candles. Swear I feel like Jesus walking, feel it in my sandals. One tap headshot and like I got a vandal. Uh, I gotta stop with the reference. I don't like to party, no, that isn't my preference. Stacking all the bands and I'm not showing deference. So if you want some help, you better pray to the reverend.